Hello everyone, um, until further notice I will not be performing at any gigs or anything like that um, for security reasons. My family, friends, and everyone close to me it just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of and you know, it's very scary um, for myself and you know, it has me worried about my kids and you know, just sleeping with anxiety and, and different things like that so just moving forward um just want to pause on everything until we know that it's, it's it's clear and safe for me to come back outside of work i appreciate uh, you all for your love and support and everybody that knows me etc thank you so much love What's going on y'all, what it is. So let's go ahead and slide on this topic and the video that I played for you guys at the beginning is actually Rodney Jones. I'm pretty sure that you guys can see that, but he's actually in fear for his life saying that he's not gonna be doing any performing for the foreseeable future until this whole situation with this lawsuit dies down and he feels safe and comfortable and his family is safe and secure. Now I must say that this lawsuit gets extremely interesting because it implicates Usher and the rapper Meek Mill being on Diddy's yachts messing with S workers and underage girls. Now there's a video floating around where Diddy was laughing at Rodney in regards to the situation dealing with his publishing because at the end of the day this is what it's all about. Diddy didn't pay that man what he felt that he needs to be paid for his work on the Love album right and so he's upset with that and so the things that he went through with Diddy staying with Diddy working on the album the things that he saw transpire in Diddy's homes and on his yacht he has it all recorded and documented and so he's using that against Diddy based off the fact that he didn't get paid for working on Diddy's album so the question is if he had got paid would he have ever brought this to our attention But hey, make no mistake about it. Go ahead and do what you do because we got to get him one way or another because this dude has been reckless for years. And me personally, what happened to Kim Porter? I will always stay on Diddy's neck. There's nothing that can take these two 15 size Timberland boots off of Diddy's neck. But anyway, what I want to do right here is kick this thing off with a clip of Diddy laughing about the publishing ordeal between him and Rodney before Rodney filed this lawsuit against him. And then there will be more clips to follow of people breaking this thing down and looking at the lawsuit in its entirety and exposing things from that lawsuit. So sit tight and I'll be back to close the video. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Little Rod ain't worth giving this kingdom to if we don't control his publishing. I can solve his efforts with three other human beings. He's eating at our table, and I like his backstory, but you need to have other people. We, it's hard to work with him unless we have his pub. He's a piece of shit human, but we do not need his talent. <laughs> In the same lawsuit filed by Lil Rob, he also mentioned an argument that went on between Diddy and Justin Combs that led to a stranger, a man being shot. The source reported in court docs, Jones detailed Justin Combs as a recruiter for underage girls and prostitutes. He also stated Diddy and his son engaged in an intense argument, which led to gunfire. According to TMZ, a man named G was shot in the stomach. Jones states Diddy told the man to lie about the incident and say he was injured in a drive-by. An LAPD investigation happened, resulting in the belief that the victim was shot outside the studio and ran inside with his injuries. That man said, if I'm going to sue Diddy, I'm going to tell everything that I saw and experienced. Now, it is all still alleged, but do y'all remember when Misa Hilton went on that IG rant? If you don't remember, I do have a video on it in my playlist, but let me remind you here as well. She posted this. Everyone has to sit around for years and act like there isn't anything wrong with you. This is where the buck stops for me. Then she posted this. The statement of fish rots from the head down means that in addition to being a major contributing factor in a family or organization's success, leadership is also the root cause of its failure and demise. The truth shall set you free. Now, this was last year, June, when she made these posts in her story. 
If you want more on that, I did a full video on her and these stories in this playlist and you can get your full from there. But y'all, this is absolutely crazy. Like, this is insane. I'm at a loss for words. Y'all, we knew Diddy's lawsuit hit heavy hitters, but this heavy hitter, nobody's going to expect. Ronnie Jones says Philadelphia rapper and a male R&B singer who performed at the Super Bowl had a Vegas residency where messing with underage girls and ex-workers on Diddy's yacht. And y'all already know who he talking about. So y'all know who he talking about allegedly. Allegedly it is Usher. Yes. Allegedly it's Usher and I have the court documents. So you pay attention to the highlighted area. It says I, rapper, redacted on Mr. Combs' yacht consorting with under girls ex-workers and j r&b singer redacted in mr combs los angeles home consorting with underage girls and ex-workers now if you pay attention closely to the bottom it says he is a philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki minaj oh shit. i just realized who the that was He's a Grammy winner, award winner. I'm just going to make the assumption that this is the Philadelphia rapper that is in the documents. Oh my f***ing God. This man is dragging everybody into this sh Surviving Diddy is bigger than what I thought it was going to be. I forgot how connected he actually is in the entertainment industry. He had Usher at a very young age. He kind of like groomed Usher into stardom. I don't know about Meek Mill and how he's connected to Meek Mill's, but... I'm not putting it past anybody these days, especially with exactly what they're saying. The ex-workers part, I can see on both sides. The underage part, I cannot see. But baby, y'all better lawyer the f*** up. Because this man has dates and times and stamps. And oh shit, everybody's getting hit. This is a Rico. This is going to be a Rico. So, if you haven't seen it yet, I just posted the initial unpacking of that Diddy and Little Rod court case docket and lawsuit. And y'all, it's so triggering. We're going to have to do a part two. So, I got a couple theories here. Number one, I do feel like Cassie's, Cassie's lawsuit, that was the lawsuit that blew the door open. This lawsuit, this going to blow it off the hinges. And the reason why this is going to blow it off the hinges, in my opinion, is because Little Rod allegedly has videos, hundreds of hours of video footage of Diddy as well as his staff and team doing alleged illegal activity. He has pictures, even stuff like, as I mentioned, in part one of the unpacking of that video, I couldn't even show the full court docket because it's so nasty and so triggering. It is graphic. We have pictures of the aftermath of a shooting <laughs> pictures of obviously diddy within his home all a host of other stuff and the, the part the part i'm interested in most importantly is obviously the people all in question who have been pictured and listed in this court docket i'm interested in diddy's legal team strategy like how, how like they got pictures Little Rod is alleging that he has pictures and I would say alleged, but they in the court docket. Most of them are. So I'm wondering, y'all going to have, that, his, his attorney, his legal team is going to have to pull a Hail Mary to get this to not go to a jury trial. Cause like what? And as I mentioned, anytime you are accused of anything across state lines, cause you know, as we know, Civil and criminal are two different things. Only the state can bring up criminal charges. The minute anything's mentioned across state lines, your DA office, they bell start ringing. Oh, and then it's alleged trafficking? Oh, yeah. What, like, your DA gonna be like, what is this and who is this? And I, I think the part that brings to the floor a bigger conversation in terms of when you're dealing with predators or alleged predators because you would think after all of these lawsuits that he has had that he would just he would be more mindful about his alleged dealings and his alleged activities but no Lil Rodney got like hella pictures hella pictures pictures intimate pictures mind you 
that's what I'm saying. I couldn't even post the full court docket because it's so nasty. So we're gonna have to unpack on a part two or in part three because this court docket, as I mentioned, is over 70 pages long. But this is getting nasty and it's getting nasty fast. But I have a theory here. As I mentioned, Cassie, Cassie's case blew the door open on Diddy. I genuinely do think that this lawsuit is going to take it off the hinges. And I do think an instrumental piece or person is going to be instrumental in taking it off the hinges. And I think they're about to talk. Fonsworth. I, I got a funny feeling. I feel like Fonsworth is about to come forth. So y'all stay tuned. This is just an interlude. Uh, we going to unpack part two in a second. I'm not a lawyer, but there is a brand new Diddy lawsuit. And this one y'all first of all let's start with the trigger warning that is listed on the front page of the lawsuit it says that this document contains highly graphic information of a nature including sa additionally there are graphic images of the aftermath of a situation redacted images of intercourse redacted images of minors workers more workers details of tracking and the illegal distribution of weapons and some other stuff now listen, I'm definitely not including anything about any minors, anything that's too graphic. I'm not playing those games. But since I did read the lawsuit, let me attempt to give you a recap of some of what's being alleged. The lawsuit was filed by a man named Rodney Jones, who according to the suit is a musical prodigy. He says in August 2022, he received a call from Diddy requesting that he produce several songs on the Love Album. Rodney agreed, and according to him, his life has been detrimentally impacted ever since. As far as defendants, there are a number of them. There's Diddy, his son, Justin Combs, the CEO of Universal Music Group, the CEO of Motown Records, which is the parent company of Love Records. There's a woman named Christina, who is the chief of staff to Diddy. There's Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Love Records, and some others. So there's a lot of defendants. Y'all gonna be sick of me, but another disclaimer. These are allegations. I am not saying they are true. I am not saying they are not true. I am simply telling you what Rodney Jones, the plaintiff in this lawsuit, is alleging happened. This is his version of events. Y'all got it? Here we go. The suit says that Rodney worked for Diddy from September 2022 to November 2023. It starts with an incident that happened on September 12th, 2022 at a recording studio. The suit says that there was a writers and producers camp at the studio. And on this specific day, Diddy, Christian Combs, and a third man named G were in a heated conversation. The conversation moves to a bathroom. And according to Rodney in this lawsuit, a firearm is discharged multiple times. A crowd that's at the studio gathers around the bathroom. And when the door finally opens, father and son exit the bathroom and G remains on the floor in the fetal position, holding his stomach. Rodney says the crowd around just stood there, not giving any help. And so he tries to apply pressure for G and then ask someone to call the ambulance. The suit alleges that Diddy gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with this incident and instead say that G was struck standing outside of the studio by a drive-by assailant. The lawsuit also includes several news articles regarding the incident and Rodney says he has several witnesses to corroborate the story and will speak publicly if subpoenaed. It's also worth noting that according to TMZ, LAPD did investigate this incident and found that G was shot during a robbery outside of the studio and ended up just running into the studio after he was in this lawsuit, Rodney says he still has clothes from that day and believes that they still may have stains and DNA from G. The lawsuit also includes pictures of the aftermath that are much too graphic for this video, but they are in the lawsuit. Rodney goes on to say that he lived with Diddy for months at a time. And while they lived together, Rodney alleges that he was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized touching by Diddy. Rodney says he is a heterosexual Christian man, and after expressing his discomfort to Diddy's chief of staff, Christina, she responded, quote, you know Sean will be Sean. So the next part in the suit involves music producer Stevie J. Rodney says that he looked up and idolized Stevie J, and Diddy used that plus his access to Stevie J to entice Rodney. According to the lawsuit, Rodney says that Diddy shared a video of Stevie J doing some stuff, 
and told Rodney, quote, this is normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. There are pictures included of what the suit alleges Stevie J is doing. And the suit goes on to say that Diddy told Rodney that he himself, Diddy, had engaged in a situation with a rapper redacted, a singer redacted, and Stevie J. The next situation detailed in the lawsuit is from Thanksgiving 2022. It alleges that Young Miami and her female cousins were at Diddy's Miami house. And while there, Rodney was in the bathroom and Miami's cousin comes into the bathroom and essays Rodney, according to this lawsuit. While living with Diddy, Rodney also says that he was transported from California to New York, Florida, and the Virgin Islands. And during that time, he says he was he was forced to solicit work. He alleges that on or about February 2nd, 2023, he believes that Diddy gave him something. Rodney says he recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and confused, and in bed with some workers and Diddy. Rodney goes on to say that on or about February 4th, 2023, Diddy allegedly forced Rodney to bring people back to his Miami, Florida home. Rodney includes some pictures from that day and says he has some video that he can provide to the court. According to the lawsuit, Rodney was forced to recruit workers. And as a part of his recruitment tools, Diddy provided him with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to booby trap on the river, this place as a signal to any worker that he approached that Diddy was in town and had sent Rodney there to recruit them. Apparently, according to this lawsuit, these workers were accustomed to servicing Diddy and would know that he's in town by the sight of the bad boy baseball cap. The lawsuit then includes Instagram profiles of two of the workers that Diddy allegedly required Rodney to solicit and engage with at his home in Miami. In this suit, Rodney says that Diddy used his power and influence to intimidate and force Rodney into soliciting and sleeping with women. He includes the phone number of a worker that he says Diddy required him to solicit and perform acts with at his home. Rodney claims that Diddy used many tactics to maintain dominion and control over him, like promising him a Grammy for a producer of the year for the Love album. Rodney says Diddy offered him $250,000 to purchase all of the instruments that he wanted. He says that Diddy promised him ownership of his $20 million property, One Star Island in Florida, and he promised him access to record label executives. But Rodney goes on to say that sometimes Diddy would switch it up. He would go from promising Rodney the world to threatening him with physical harm, including threatening him to eat his face, allegedly. Suit then details a listening party from July 2nd, 2023, in which an R&B artist, that's redacted, Justin Combs, some workers, and some folks who shouldn't have been there were all there. Rodney alleges that the listening party event began at 7 p.m. And upon information and belief, he says the alcohol was laced. Then... Cuba Gooding Jr. is mentioned. Suit says that Diddy introduced Rodney to Cuba on a yacht and then left them alone. Rodney alleges that there was some unwanted touching, groping, and fondling, and he includes a screenshot from the day of the encounter. Lastly, Rodney claims that he was not compensated for his time living with Diddy or the songs that he produced. Rodney says he attempted to work with Diddy to secure his publishing and royalty rights for the work he completed on the album, but Diddy only offered him $29,000 for 13 months, thousands of hours of work, and nine songs that ultimately made it to the album. Suit says, quote, Mr. Jones was willing to take $50,000 for his publishing and royalties, but Diddy's self-serving greed would not allow him to pay Rodney the additional $21,000 that he was asking. In this lawsuit, Rodney says that Diddy's chief of staff, Christina, is to Diddy what Ghislaine Maxwell was to Jeffrey. He goes so far as to say that the whole operation is a Rico enterprise. Ciao. Okay, I've recapped enough. Y'all get the point. According to TMZ, Diddy's attorney says that, quote, Low Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. His reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. He adds, quote, we have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored. As Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls. We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. So again, this is all alleged and Diddy will have the opportunity to formally respond to all of these allegations. I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it's not true. But 
If you want to see the full lawsuit, that includes hints at who the redacted names are, as well as pictures and video, you can join my Patreon because I posted the full lawsuit in there. I'm done. All right, so you guys just heard all of that. So I want you guys to drop down in the comments and let me know what you think about everything that was talked about within this video. Do you think that Buddy is just mad because Diddy didn't pay him and offer him the things that he promised him? Or do you think that there's some level of truth and validity to Rodney's story in regards to what transpired with his time uh, dealing with Diddy and living with him? Drop down in the comments and let a brother know. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, peace.